was very late. Really, it was very early in the morning. I was up wandering the streets in the neighborhood I knew well. I'd grown up in the neighborhood. My ancestors had farmed that land before it had become a suburban neighborhood. I had a bad week that day. I wasn't sure what I was doing or why. I went for a walk because I couldn't sleep. I reached a street corner, one that I knew well, I'd known well for many years. And I was so frustrated, I threw my arms up and I said, why? What am I supposed to do? What? What? And almost like a story out of the Old Testament of the Bible, it seemed like a great presence came up in the world around me, like out of the park. And the presence said to me, live. Now, I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Was I, had I been drinking that night? I actually didn't think I had been. What was going on? What I saw seemed very, very real. I'm a, enough of a skeptic that I thought, yeah, I don't think that was real. But then I realized I had asked a question. What should I do? Why am I here? I had an answer. It didn't matter if it had come from the presence of a holy why or just the strange firings of my brains and neurons. Live was a pretty good answer.
For the lesson today, I want to tell you the story of Jacob. The story of Jacob comes from the Old Testament, or in the Jewish tradition, it's called the Torah. The story of Jacob is a story about him and his brother Esau. And I'm going to begin this story where Jacob has been away for a long time from his home. He and Esau had a bit of a fight. They were pretty unhappy with one another. Jacob had decided he wanted to come home. He was willing to come home no matter how mad his brother was at him. And so he was approaching his home, the land where he'd grown up, where his brother still lived. When he got close, he saw there was a whole army of people. Jacob thought, oh my gosh, this, is, this isn't going to go well. My brother doesn't want me to come home. He decided he'd think about what to do that night. So he set up camp. So he looked out at the army. And then a visitor came. And the visitor said, fight me. Jacob said, I want to go see my brother. I don't be fighting you. The visitor began to wrestle with Jacob. And they wrestled all night, arguing back and forth, wrestling hard. Finally, just as the sun was about to come up, the visitor pushed Jacob on his hip. And, and Jacob suddenly realized he had this, this limb. He fought with a guy all night, this visitor. Nothing had happened, and all of a sudden he had this limp, and he looked at the visitor, and the visitor said, you are transformed now. Now your name is Israel. Now the important thing about that name is Israel in Hebrew means one who wrestles with God. Or perhaps as we Unitarian Universalists might say, he who wrestles with the holy, or she, or they who wrestle with the holy. Jacob did go and see his brother. Jacob didn't think it looked very good, but it wasn't an army waiting for him. It was a party. It was friends. It was more family. It was a great welcome. Jacob went home. He was welcomed by his brother, and it was good to be home. From all that dwell below the skies, let souls of hope and faith arise. Let peace, good will on earth be sung to every land by every
Good morning. This morning we are doing a special ceremony in recognition of new adults in our congregation. Nolan Babcock, Connor Davis, Emma Elsie, Anton Gavetta West, Ethan Judy, Orion Roberts, Annie Sheehan Dean. Now becoming an adult is a rite of passage that is every bit as important as a dedication or a marriage or a ceremony of commitment, but we don't often mark it as explicitly in our congregations. Perhaps it is because becoming an adult is part of a transitional period, not a specific event like a birth or a death or a marriage. It is more an acknowledgement of the many small steps towards realizing one's own self as a separate entity rather than child of. A recognition of how we have been shaped by our many experiences up to this point. Like the river always flowing to the sea, we are both where we came from and where we are going. Nolan, Connor, Emma, Anton, Ethan, Orion, and Annie, we have cherished the time that you have spent with us as children and youth, however much or however little you have been with us in any given year. This community has taken pride and joy in teaching you, in worshiping with you, and in creating a place for you as you have grown. May the blessings of this congregation be with you this day and every day as you navigate this world as adults. Hi, I'm Connor Davis from the class of 2020. I've been going to the church since my first uh, time they had the Harry Potter camp way back in like 2007. And uh, go Tigers. Hi, my name is Ethan Judy. I'm a recently graduated senior, and I've, uh, I've been going to this church since I was a kindergartner. It, it was really, really big in my development, and uh, I've learned so much in RE, and you know, I, I really, really appreciate the community we've built and the, the people that, that I've met through the church, and I can't wait to be still a part of that community going forward as an adult. And I just want to thank everyone for the, the congratulations and the, you know, the, the community that I've been a part of. Hi, I'm Emma Elsie, and I'm going to be graduating from Denham Springs High School. Hi, my name is Annie Sheehan Dean, and I just graduated from Baton Rouge Magnet High School. Um, I'm not as active a member of the church as I'd like to be, but I've really appreciated the unconditional support I've received from this community. Hi, I'm Nolan Babcock. Annie Sheehan Dean. Anton Povera West. Connor Davis. Emma Elsie. Ethan Judy. Nolan Babcock. Orion Roberts. Your congregation surrounds you. Obviously not in here in the sanctuary this year. You have a very different year when you are becoming adults than most of the rest of us have ever seen. We surround you at a distance this year. We still surround you. Imagine it though that we are here in the sanctuary. We are surrounding you in this very spot, the people of your congregation. You and I are in the center and I'm speaking these words. Like you, there are people in this congregation who grew up Unitarian Universalist. I'm one of those people. We have a special role in this tradition because we have experienced what this living tradition has to offer us in many more stages of life as children and as youth, as well as young adults and adulthood. We have insights and understandings from these experiences it gives us wisdom to offer others who are joining their spiritual journeys to ours. But I ask all of us who are watching this and surrounding you this morning to be that people who choose the power of fearing less and loving more. We the people who choose to work together for the love of all beings. We who have dedicated ourselves to the well-being of you 
these seven people becoming adults. I ask all of us now, welcome these young adults into our community. Recognize now their power and their responsibilities as they choose to be adults, as they choose to be equals among you. Whoever you are watching this, part of the congregation or part of the family of one of these new young adults, say these words quietly, loudly, say it in your spirit or your thoughts. We welcome you. We welcome you into adulthood. Annie Sheehan Dean, Anton Rivera West, Connor Davis, Emma Elsie, Ethan Judy, Nolan Babcock, and Ryan Roberts. Welcome to adulthood. It is our hope that you will accept this welcome from us. Please continue to journey with us if you wish or can. Because together, we can transform this love that we have for one another and for this life into justice, into a greater love for all beings and for all the beings yet to come. Welcome. Congratulations.
was only a year ago that I was where you all are today, and yet I wasn't. To say that 2020 has been a tumultuous year would be an understatement, and I can imagine that the disappointment of missing certain milestones weighs heavily on the class of 2020. However, I know that the community is very proud of you all for persevering, and I am personally excited to see what you'll do with this moment, and it is definitely a pivotal one. This service comes at a time when many of us are exhausted. I'm not even in a place yet to describe the emotional toll that recent events have taken on many of us. However, I do have the words of Jean M. Olson in this reading entitled, Go Boldly. May you be brave enough to expose your aching woundedness, to reveal your vulnerability. May you speak your deepest truths, knowing that they will change as you do. May you sing the music within you, composing your own melody, playing your song with all your heart. May you draw, paint, sculpt, and sew, showing the world your vision. May you write letters, poetry, biographies, slogans, graffiti, the great novel, laying bare your words to love and hate. May you love even though your heart breaks again and again, and until the end of your days, may your life be filled with possibilities and courage. So take that reading, take your voice, take your experience and your openness to new experiences, and take your light onward as you forge a path through the beauties, the pitfalls, and the wonders in between that lie ahead. Thank you. Sister, moon, 
Mother Earth. My soul weeping. A symphony of life overflowing. I give myself. I too hum through every pore with every breath. I give myself. I give myself an extension of all that is, was, and ever will be. So this is the third of three sermons in which I talk about the three statements that came out of the Holy Why process that began in February with a workshop. The third statement that your board of trustees wrote using the words that you chose at that workshop, your board wrote this, transform. We are open to joyful transformation, spiritual transcendence, and the awe inspired by the world. Your Board of Trustees listened to you. So in this Holy Why workshop that began in February, and the work of the Holy Why that's continued since then, the Board asked you to express your values, I asked you to describe your dreams for this congregation. There are here in the sanctuary posters on the walls, posters that are imaginary magazine covers about articles featuring the Unitarian Church of Baton Rouge and its amazing work 10 years from now. 
I've kept the words of the Holy Why with me through these last two and a half months of the pandemic and being home alone in my apartment. I've been thinking a lot about what does it mean to love, to connect, to transform. This third statement pairs two especially important ideas, spiritual ideas, the idea of awe and transformation. I think most of us come to church because we are in awe in some way. We are in awe of the world around us, of the amazing life out the window as we look at the world, the amazing life surrounding us in our homes, the streets around us, the birds in the sky, the fish in the seas. I wonder in amazement, in awe, when I see an eight-year-old child, a child who is themselves looking at the world just in awe, because what do babies do so well, but they're in awe, they're alive, and everything is so amazing. I wonder and in, am in, in awe at those who do the right thing even though they know no one is watching. Perhaps no one else cares. They care. It matters to them. I'm in awe when I see a lost soul saved by a congregation of people who might really have nothing to gain other than deeper connection and a greater understanding of love. For that, I feel a great deal of awe. These moments of awe pull me away, I've noticed. They pull me away from the shiny uh, trinkets of consumer culture. Oh, look, you can buy this. Oh, here's this toothpaste here. Teeth will gleam just so. Or the shiny, hateful Italians of, oh, isn't it terrible that, that horrible thing they did? This, you should hate this. You should have the right to uh, go out and get your hair cut anytime you want because who cares about anybody else? This shiny business of hate. None of this is particularly awesome in and of itself. Perhaps just awesome in its banality and stupidity, it's lifelessness. Americans struggle with awe. It's hard to schedule it, you know. Hey, tonight, beautiful sunset, 7.04 p.m., transcendent moment of awe will even follow them. And then you can say, okay, been there, done that, saw the sunset. Beautifully. Awesome. Law takes time. It usually requires slowing down. Maybe even slowing down as much as we did for the distancing we've done in the past two and a half months. Paying attention to law requires a willingness for us to say, let's do something less rather than adding more. We have to have time to be rather than time to just do. There are times, though, in my life when I've noticed that awe breaks in regardless of how busy I've got or whatever may be going on in my life, like a night, an early morning, many decades ago now, all burst in and had a very brief conversation with me. It's taken me a lot of time to understand what that moment meant to me. A lot of time because the moment of awe was not an end. Awe is not an end in and of itself. Awe is the beginning of a journey. It's only the beginning of life. If we are truly in awe and we take it seriously, it leads to transformation. First part of that holy wise statement, transform. 
colleague of one my of mine once preached that transformation is a big deal. It is a big deal. Think about what those wonderful young adults just came of age in our congregation. It's a big deal, all of that life's work, to arrive at a moment where I can proudly say, I'm an adult. To be transformed, to accept transformation, assuming we can even choose whether or not to accept it. To be transformed is to become an entirely different person, a new person. It's like the transformation that happens when a caterpillar weaves a cocoon around itself and then later emerges as a butterfly. That is no trivial transformation. It's a transformation from caterpillar to cocoon to a complete liquid back into butterfly that emerges. It's a new life. Everything is different. Losing 10 pounds or having a new insight on white fragility, that's not transformation. It's not as simple as committing to be a better person or committing to do something about the racist supremacy that exists in the very foundations of our nation that has to be changed. It's clearly time. It won't be done with a simple vote. It won't be changed by just reading more books. That kind of transformation has because, happens because we give over our lives, our very lives, to the change itself. Which in this case, the change, the lives that have to change are not the lives of black people or people of color. The lives that must truly be transformed are the lives of folks who look like me, white folks. Transformation is hard. It's brutal. I've been transformed suddenly, harshly, by the death of people I have loved. I've been transformed by my own addiction and my good fortune to have found sobriety. I've been transformed by illness, by violence. Transformation has sometimes been wild, sometimes it's been long and boring, like waiting out a pandemic. I was transformed the moment my children were born. I've been transformed by being here with you. I've been transformed by the way in which I see every congregation making a difference, literally saving lives. I, know, I say it a lot. Get transformed and keep doing it because it counts. It really does. I've seen people transformed by leaving a destructive relationship. I mentioned the, did I mention the pandemic? And I mentioned the transformation that lies ahead for those of us who have to make the big changes. In my experience, the transformation is actually not so much a choice. Our choice in transformation is to resist it and waste our lives, to live, to accept the transformations that come our way, to realize they've arrived in a moment of awe, and then take the journey, make the changes, endure the struggle, have courage for the unknown that is on its way. And that's easy to say, but not easy to do, because it's painful, it's frustrating, sometimes enraging. It's never easy. I can't imagine that it's easy to be transformed from caterpillar to butterfly. It wasn't easy to be transformed by alcoholic drinking to alcoholic lucky enough to be sober. Law sets us off on the journey. We will just let ourselves notice it. 
The transformation is raw. Not all. Raw. Harsh. A wild resource tosses us around, asks everything of us, life itself. We can close ourselves off to it. We'll still be transformed, but into what? Probably nothing nearly as good as we could have been had we opened ourselves to it. It's not a trivial thing to say yes to the call of awe and allow ourselves to be transformed. Because to be transformed is to be Come responsible for the outcome of our transformation. Is that fair? I don't know. It just is. But what else would we do? Let me ask you that again. What else are we going to do? Ignore it? Just not live? Not live into the lives that are possible for us? Never to really feel awe in the first place. This world is amazing. Even in its most difficult moments, the blue sky, the wonder of people who have endured for 400 years and still have gifts to bring, the wonder of our children being born, the wonder of the demonstrations going across, going on across this country, most of them led by very young adults, even youth. I am in awe. I don't know what showed up on that street corner as many years ago, the wee early hours of the morning. Sometimes I think it might have been God. Sometimes I think it was just random firing supply brain neurons, chemistry, whatever. But the outcome was clear. There was in it a holy why. Live. Live. Live fully. Live as Unitarian Universalists live, interconnected to everyone and everything, for the beauty of all of that interconnection, and for the love we find within those connections. I choose to be transformed and to be accountable for the outcome of my transformations. Because I want to live. I want to live every moment of life as fully as I can. Suck the marrow out of it, as one poet has said. I want to be awake and alive for all the new moments of awe that are still on their way. The babies yet to be born babies I get to hold as a minister in my arms as we dedicate them, the people who get married, the justice that I know is possible, finally coming to be real in our country. I'm grateful for the awe that waits ahead, and no matter how hard or how much of a struggle it will be, look forward to the transformations that also lie ahead. Your words are powerful words. I will take them with me to my next interim ministry. Transform. We are open to joyful transformation, spiritual transcendence, and the awe inspired by this world. Receiving as love 
Rights are 